please do so. Praise God. That's how we're going to get the gospel in all the world. If you have a cousin, friends, relatives, get on the phone right now. First of all, tell them that Word for the Day is on the air. And then join the YouTube channel. Praise God. And uh, you can help us be a tremendous blessing in spreading this message. Because when you join, you increase our audience and you help us expand the gospel. So we love and we appreciate you. Most of all, we want to see you right here on Sunday morning if you in the triad locally, anywhere near High Point, 1801 Deep River Road. Get in our 10, a, uh, 10 a.m., uh, about 1015, we start praise and worship. And, of course, you pick up on live streaming at 11. But we want to see you in the live service, so we hope to see you soon. All right, let's get right into the Word of God. Those of you that have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to St. John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 1. This verse is many times referred to as the Genesis of the New Testament. Praise God. And I want to teach from the subject, the Word made flesh. The Word made flesh. And then I want to use as a subtopic, beholding Jesus. Something about looking at Jesus. Behold Jesus that transforms our life. You know, in the Old Testament, Jesus, uh, the serpent that was held up on the pole when the people were bitten and, and uh, uh, they, uh, many of them died. And the Bible says that they took a serpent and put up on the pole and said everyone that looked at the serpent would live. And you're like, why would the sign of a serpent be the sign of Jesus? Because he, in the Old Testament, he bore our weaknesses, sicknesses, and disease. He was a curse. And when they beheld Jesus, all those that looked at him was healed, and they lived, praise God. It's just something about beholding or looking at Jesus. And we're going to teach from the subject, the word was made flesh. So I want to get right into this. Uh, St. John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 1. Uh, as, again, we refer to this as the Genesis of the New Testament. We know Genesis 1, 1 says... Uh, that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Well, here we find uh, the genesis of the New Testament in verse 1 of uh, St. John chapter 1. It says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning was the Word, the Word, Christ, Jesus, was with God. Jesus just didn't come on the scene when he was born in a manger over in the book of Matthew and Luke. That's when the word became flesh. He was always one with God from the very beginning. And notice it said the word was with God and the word was or is God. God and his word is one. You cannot separate them. We understand this is the mystery of the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, uh, God the Holy Spirit. But the word, Jesus was always one. With the Father. I think the Amplified brings this out. Let's, let's just immediately go over before we read verse 14. Let's go over to Genesis 1 1 and read that from the Amplified. In the beginning, before all times, was the Word. And notice in parentheses, Christ. He was there from the very beginning. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the word, Christ, was with God, and the word was God himself. Praise God. So we see that Christ and his son cannot be separated. Jesus is the manifestation of God in the flesh, in the earth. He's the representative of God. He came to show us the Father, but he was always one with the Father. You know, they said, show us the Father. He said, have I been so long time with you that I'm in the Father and the Father in me? When you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And so, now that we understand that Jesus Christ was there from the very beginning, part of the Godhead, let's go down back to the King James in verse 14. It says, in the beginning, of course, verse 1 again, was the Word, the Word, Christ was of God, and the Word was God. And look at what happened in verse 14. And the Word, Christ, was made flesh. I want you to meditate on that. The Word became flesh, talking about Jesus, and dwelt among us, and we beheld, that's why we're talking about beholding his glory. 
we, we saw him. We saw what, what God looked like by looking at Jesus. When you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Amen. Well, the Father will is revealed through Jesus. The word became flesh. We needed an example. So the word became, was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory, another key word, of the only begotten of the Father. He, at that time, he was the only son. He was what we call the first begotten. There were no other sons of God. Full of grace and full of truth. Now, let's go over to the Amplified again. We'll start again from the Amplified. And we will read verse 1 and then verse 14. In the beginning, before all times, was the word. Christ. In other words, Jesus. And the word was with God. Jesus was with God. And the word was God himself. Verse 14 in the Amplified. And the word, Christ, became flesh. Human incarnate. In other words, he wrapped himself up in a human body in Mary's womb because he had to be born like you and I were. Amen. Adam was not born of a woman. He was created from the dust of the earth. Christ, to relate to you and I, became incarnate in the flesh. Watch this. Tabernacle fixed his tent of flesh and lived for us a while, three and a half years to be exact, even though he was on the earth for nearly 33 years, among us, and we actually saw that word, we're talking about beheld, beholding his glory. We saw his glory, his honor, his majesty, such glory as the only begotten son received from his father, full of grace, and full of loving kindness and full of truth. Notice Jesus came full of grace and full of truth, full of the word, full of grace and full of truth. The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth Forgiveness, grace, amen, love, which fulfilled the law, was, was given by Jesus Christ. So he said, we actually beheld his glory. No one had seen God at any time. That's why in the Old Testament, a lot of people uh, uh, thought God was a killer, God was a murderer, God this. And Jesus had to come as the representative of God to show us what the Father was about. A lot of people thought God was a killer. God was a murderer. No. Jesus said, when you see me, you've seen the Father. And so he was in spirit form and I want to help you with that. When we're talking about stuff being in spirit form, that don't mean not real. The spirit is more real than the natural. The spirit world was there in the beginning. God in the word. God began to say the spirit world created the natural world. So everything we now see in the natural, with natural eye, came out of the heart of God. Amen. The spirit world is the real world. Praise God. So when we talk about him being in the spirit form, don't think that means he did not exist. Spiritual things are just as, more, they are more real than natural things. When you go to heaven, where it's his spirit, that don't mean that you're going to float around in your, 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 your hand, when you get born again and, and you're we, we are recreated and we go to heaven and we put on an incorruptible body, we'll change into that state. And you get to heaven, your hand won't go through a podium. There's, there's the streets paved with gold. There's rivers there. There's mansions there. You'll be able to touch them with spirit things or spirit to spirit. They're just as real as my natural hand touch this podium. So I want to clear that up so we don't get all mystical and, and you know, spooky here. This is not spooky stuff. We just needed to see a Savior. He came down to where that we could behold him, Jesus, and see his glory. So the word, Jesus, became flesh. Why? So that we would know what God is like. Amen. And because to redeem us, he had to become a human being just like you and I. That's why he had to take on the flesh and blood body be born of a virgin because 
that was the same way that that relates to you and I as men and women. A high priest had to be able to relate. And since we were human beings, that's simple. He became human. But he remained all God, even though he was in the flesh. But he did not use his God privileges. He entered himself. Read Philippians 2, 5. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ, who thought it not robbing to be equal with God, but took, or not, took on the form of a servant. He didn't hold on to his rest. That part of him. God never gets thirsty. Jesus got thirsty sometimes because he operated as a man. God cannot be tempted. In Matthew chapter 4 and Luke 4, the Bible says he was taken up into the Mount of Temptation. God never get why? Why is he? Because he's operating as a man. He was incarnate. He took on the flesh and blood body just like you and I. God never gets weary, the Bible said. The Bible said that Jesus at the Garden of Gethsemane, he got weary, he tired. That was the man's side of him. He came to relate to you and I. So the word was made flesh. But now, I want you to stay with me here because we're getting ready to go somewhere. Let me make this statement. God's word then has transforming, God's word has transforming power from spirit form into human flesh. We just read that. That's what happened. The word was with God from the very beginning. He's Christ was, but we couldn't see him. He was in spirit form. And you remember uh, some years ago, and even now, they have movies called the Transformers, the rise of the Transformers, the ability to be one thing and change to another. Well, God's word got to have transforming power because Jesus, the word was made for, he was changed from spirit form into a human being, and we beheld him. My God, that's Jesus. He came. He grew up as a kid. He was in the temple. We beheld him. 30 years and then the Holy Ghost came on him. John said, I see him. Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of we could see him. And he was baptized in the Holy Ghost and began to heal the sick and turn water and wine and do the works of Jesus and cast out devils. For this purpose was the Son of God manifest that he might destroy the work. We beheld him. We couldn't see him in spirit form, but the word became flesh. Now, what we need to understand, God wants to reduplicate that same word in your life and mine. The word, God's word has transforming power to transform from, from spirit form he said, into human flesh. God's word has transforming power. And that word spirit form it just means now we know that God, he was in, now we can see him. Look at St. John 6, 63. Let's just look at the word of God. Jesus said, it is the spirit that quickened it, the flesh profited nothing. My words that I speak to you, and I'm speaking to you the word, are spirit and they are life. The word of God has, it's spirit form, but it has transforming power in human beings' lives. And that's why Jesus came, and we'll get into this. He was the only begotten. We beheld the only God, but he came to be the first begotten. From the book of uh, Matthew all the way to the book of uh, the end of the gospel, he's called the only begotten. But from the book of Acts all the way to the book of Revelation, he's the first begotten. God wants to transform our life. How? Same way Jesus' life was transformed. He wants us to be visible. He wants us to be made known that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So this is not hard to understand. The more words you get in you, the more you begin and act on it and conform, the more you begin to look like Jesus, talk like Jesus. That's why Jesus came. He wants us to walk like him, talk like him, heal like him. Praise God. But you can't do that without the word. That's what transformed us. The word became flesh. Well, when we get the word in our life, it should transform how we talk, how we walk, how we live, same word. Praise God. Amen. To where it's tangible. Now you can see and walk and talk. God wants us to be conformed to the image of Jesus. And you can't do that without the word of God because his word is spirit in their life. Now I'll give you a good example of scripture we all, all know. 
think is in Proverbs. But I want you to break it down to show you that the word can transform from spirit power into human flesh. The word became flesh. God wants the same thing. Flesh just means tangible, what we can see it. Just like we couldn't see Jesus till he came in the body. The world can't see us unless Jesus is shining through our lives. The word wants to be tangible. People, you can talk about, you know, thank God God heals. But if you're sick, it's not tangible. We can't see it. Thank God God will get you out of debt. God wants to use your life to, to be a representative of Jesus. Praise God. He wants that to become real, flesh, in the natural. And he said, my son, see, when you give your attention to the word, I know you heard this, but read it with an open mind, open spirit. Incline thy ear and to say, what are you doing? You're getting it in your attention to it. You're getting it in your ear. Faith coming by here and hearing by the word of God. Keep going. Let them not depart from their sight. Keep it in the center of your heart. Now we're going to take the word, which is spirit. I get it in my ear. I get it in my, goes into my spirit. Now watch this. For they are like to those that find them, but heal it and help to all their flesh. What was one spirit from the word of God will manifest itself in your human body. In a manifest healing. If you give your time and your attention to the word of God, then there's healing power in the word. It's transforming power to turn your body, if it's sick, into a healed body. Keeping it well. Same thing, the word became flesh. What's that? Get it in your heart. Keep it in the center of your heart and your spirit. Because the spirit is alive and in a manifest. Now, healing and health is just part of the manifestation, the transformation power of God. It'll get you out of that. It'll, it'll get you healed. Everything that the word did in Jesus' life, if you put it in your eyes, put it in your heart, keep it in the city, praise God, it'll manifest in your life. Healing will be one of the manifestations of it. Praise God. That's why Jesus never got sick. He healed. Debt cancellation. Amen. Jesus wasn't broke. As he is, so are we in this world. That's how we become like Jesus in this world. That's how we are transformed into his likeness. Thank God healing is just one part of it. God wants you to uh, have the same results Jesus had. Amen. The works I do, you should do also in greater work. How are you going to do that? By abiding in the vine. By staying in the word. And when that word gets in you, it'll manifest. There'll come a day you'll begin to look like Jesus. You'll be out of debt like Jesus. You'll lay hands on the sick like Jesus. God wants to reduplicate his son in our lives. This is simple. We, that wasn't just for Jesus. God wants the world on your job, people to see healing, to see deliverance, to see manifestations of his power, to see that cancellation. When we are well, when we are healed, it brings glory to God. But you can't do that except you first get in the word of God. It starts in spirit form, but it gets it, the word become flesh. In other words, we want to see it. People tired of us just preaching about God going to heal. God going, God to cancel that. Show me in the flesh. And if you will get your time and your attention to the word and keep it in the center of your heart, what's in your spirit will manifest in your life. And healing is part of it. You'll be well. You'll be healed. The word of God has healing power in it. For uh, uh, Hebrews 4.12, the word is quick. That's the whole English for life. It's alive. This, this book is not just a, a natural book. It's alive, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, person even to divide and asunder. Watch this. The spirit, soul, and the joints and marrow, it'll get in your marrow. It'll get in your bone. That's just what the word will do. When you get it in your spirit, it'll manifest in its body. It will become flesh. Praise God. And the more intent you are. See, we've never really gone whole hog after the word. We think the word is just something to get in when you get time to do it or when, you know, I'm not busy. Now, if a man would daily get in the word of God, keep it in his heart, keep it in his eyes, faith coming by here, keep it in his ears. Something will begin to happen, not only in his physical body, not only with the joy and life of God come in his physical body. Something will happen to your finance. It'll begin to transform how you look how you think, how you act. 
Elijah had so much word in his spirit that even when he died, it had got in his bones. There was an enemy patrol this, that, that was going through. The, the enemy was coming through and they was going to bury this dead man. And they saw the enemy coming in and they panicked and, and they just threw the body over in this, 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 this hole. And it was Elijah's grave. And the Bible says that when the dead man bones uh, dead man touched his bones. That was enough resurrection power in his bones. The man came alive. That's the word being made flesh. When we build buildings that bring glory to God, when we are out of debt, it's real. We can see it now. We beheld. We beheld his glory. We, we can see healing. We can see deliverance. We can see the same results in their life that Jesus had. That's what's happening in the book of Acts. Peter had so much word in his spirit that they just got in proximity. If you just got in a shadow, anointing went forth. So we ain't thought about it in that way. We thought about, well, that was just G. No, the word will become flesh in our lives. Medicine, healing, it'll transform your body. It'll transform your finances. You'll begin to look just like Jesus. You'll begin to get the same results as Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. So the word then has transforming power. To not only keep us well and healed, but change our finances, change your life, change your status, how you live, where you live, the conditions of your life. It'll become flesh. People will be able... When we talk about becoming flesh and manifest, to manifest means to be brought to public view. It's something more about when you can see something with your eyes that is a greater testimony than just hearing something preach. When that man that had been blind from his birth got healed, it got everybody's attention. They called Jesus a sinner. How can a sinner heal a blind man? He said, look, man. Sin or not, I don't know. I know I was in y'all church. All I know, I'm blind now. I can see. It's something about when you can see the results. What that book of Acts call infallible proofs. Unquestionable evidence. And that's why we're headed in the church. The people that are going to focus in on this word, praise God. What's getting our spirit is going to break out, not only as healing in our body, but in our finances, in our lives. The same results of Jesus because we're connected to him. And it becomes real, something tangible, infallible proofs. So then continually beholding. Notice it said we beheld his glory. Look at him. How we look at him in the word. Staying in that word, keeping it before your eyes. Keeping it in the center of your heart. I look at the word more than I do television, more than I do the news, more than I do magazine. When the word, he says, be diligent in the word of God. Protect your heart with all diligence. Because what getting in your heart is going to break out in your life. People are going to be able to see it. A good man out of a good deposit of his heart. Remember the words of spirit. Bring forth good things. My life began to change and be transformed the more I kept beholding Jesus, beholding Jesus, focusing in on Jesus, giving him my attention, attending to his word. Keep it before your eye. I know what the world is at. I hear what they talk about, sickness and disease. I hear they talk about you can't pay this off. I, but I know my attention, and it began to transform my life. And now it's being made flesh. When people can see the manifestation of his glory. It's a greater testimony. This is what Paul was talking about in 1 Corinthians 2, 5, and in 4 and 5, when he says, I didn't come with you with enticing words of man wisdom. I'm a Greek scholar. I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews. Paul was on the level of Aristotle. He was steeped in Jewish religion. He could speak words eloquently, but he said, I'm not coming with that. But I'm coming to you with power and demonstration in the spirit. Them things you can see that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. We're headed somewhere. 
These people that are focusing in to realize the word can transform me not only just my help, but in every area of my life. That's the word being made flesh. I'm going to reduplicate Jesus in the earth. Because what get in my spirit is going to be made manifest in the flesh or in the natural where folks can see it. What you think demon spirits are? When a person is possessed, it's someone what's in their spirit, devil, arr, man and man, man, he was cutting himself. What's it got in the flesh? Now, if the devil can manifest himself in the flesh, God wants to manifest himself in the flesh through your life. Praise God. We just got to be able to have the diligence and the tenacity and the focus to keep our eyes on it. Keep it in the city of your heart. Give your attention to it. I just preached a message called keeping your foe. There's all types of distractions. Satan will bring them. But you got to keep our focus on the word of God. So then continually beholding Jesus in his word. That's how you do it. Transform our lives. It transformed our lives into the very same image. The word was made flesh. Man, it, it, you know... <laughs> I remember when I was got saved in Baptist church and I was in this word and I was born again. Hold that up. Now. And I remember I used to carry my Bible with me everywhere. I was just singing on the choir. People got mad at me because I would always go, the word say, the word say, the word say. And I was just about, man, I was crazy in the word of God. The word say lay hands on the sick. I don't care what the, the word says we should be filled with the Holy. The word say. And they got so mad at me. And they said, look at those dears. Oh, we got that Bible. Who do you think he is? Going around like he's a little Jesus. And that's exactly what I was trying to be. A little Jesus. I begin to look like Jesus. People were getting filled with the Holy Ghost on the choir. People were getting healed on the choir. I wasn't even preaching yet. But I was in the Word. It was, it was being manifest in my flesh. The Word said, I begin to do. I remember my, 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 my cousin, uh, Renee, broke out with, the, with a, uh, 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 these balls all over her face. Her skin just, I mean, she, her face looked like uh, 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 a volcano had hit it in uh, water. And, and I remember uh, how extreme I was in this and that. And my family, they, they knew I was different. They was watching me. And they told me, Renee, will you pray for her? I prayed for her and instantly... Oh, my God. Those bombs. I'm not making this up. I got testimonies. There. That stuff, her skin clear. And it got my whole family attention. They begin to, what's happening? It's being manifest. That's that word in my spirit coming out of my body, getting the same results of Jesus. And I can tell you stories and stories like this. What was happening? They said, he think he won't run around a little G. That's exactly who I was trying to imitate. Who you think I'm trying to be, a little devil? No. We're to imitate Jesus. It transformed my life into the same. That's why God brought Jesus. Look, Romans 8, 29. I want to put all this together. For whom he did for no. Listen, when you was born in the hospital and your mom and dad were trying to decide what your name to put on birth certificate, it's not when God knew you. He said before you was born, I knew you in your mother's womb. And he had a purpose. He said, boom, he did for no. He also did predestinate. To be conformed to the image of his dear son that he might be not the only begotten, the firstborn among many. So Jesus came, the word was made flesh. We beheld his God, the only begotten, but he was just coming to be the, our example. But in the spirit, God says there are going to be many sons and daughters. That's what the day of Pentecost was all about. On that day, the Bible said 3,000 were born. Later on, four, the church was born because God wanted to reduplicate himself through the church. And when the church was born, they mean they hit the streets at the beautiful gate, man in prayer, expected to receive some Peter and John. Children go have other, such as I have. Give I thee. The man was here. What's that? People could see healing. Oh, my God. And they say, don't look at us. By our power, it's Jesus. Faith in the name of Jesus. They were just doing what Jesus did. He was reduplicating himself. And somehow the church has got off balance. He wants to reduplicate himself in your finances. 
Reduplicate this. We beheld his glory. The word will be met if you stay in it. It'll begin to make you look like Jesus. It'll conform you to his image. Jesus wasn't sick. Jesus wasn't broke. Jesus wasn't worried. Jesus wasn't in fear. And that's the purpose of why God had you and I born again. To reduplicate Jesus in our lives so that the same word that people begin to see as they beheld him, people begin to look at you on your job. and say, man, he talked well just like Jesus. That cat got for he had just... Greatest compliment you can ever give me. He's out of debt just like, my God, everywhere you go, he brings a crop. Greatest compliment you can bring me. Why? That's why God had me born again. The firstborn, the pattern. God, we were molded. And the Amplified says, and I like this, the Amplified says that we might be molded in his inward likeness. I like that. Because the word worked from the inside out. That spirit form, what is manifest in your spirit form, remember, we couldn't see it. It'll be made flesh. And that means inward likeness, not just stuff, but the character of God. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, temperance, meat. You'll begin to find yourself flowing just like Jesus in the fruit. Why? You're connected to the vine. We're the branch. And if the branch, if healing, deliverance, if long-suffering faith is coming out of the vine, it gets in me. And I look just like him. Praise God. My thing is staying connected. How it, same fruit, same results. Amen. Being manifest. But that don't happen overnight. That's why when you got a tree, you have to keep fit. The, the word of God, we are trees planted by rivers of water. And sometimes you don't see the fruit yet. You ain't seen your healing, your debt cancer. There are things God has promised. But stay connected. Stay connected. That apple coming. That peach is coming. You'll know tree by its fruits. And there go, my God. That's the it's coming from Jesus. Firstborn among many. Firstborn among many. God wants to build an army. And that's why he had you and I born again, to be conformed. What's conforming us? The word. The word. It changes your finances. It changes your body. It changes your status. It, cha it changes. It'll cha it changed my family. Did it happen all night? No, but I just stayed with it. I stayed with it. And it kept things kept being manifest in the natural, in the flesh. Now look at St. John. In this union and communion with him. Look, in the word, in prayer, in all these 50 years. Staying in the word. Communion with God. He's real to me. He's not some big guy in the sky. He's my daddy. He walks with me. I wake up and I talk to him just like I would talk to my wife. He's a person. He gets in the car in this communion and union with him. Love is brought to his completion and attain perfection with us that we may have confidence in the day of, of, of judgment with assurance and boldness to face him because as he is, so are we not when we die and go to heaven in this world. People, no one could see Jesus because he came in this world. They begin to be hell is glory. And when you get out of debt, when you get healed, when you get delivered in this world, God wants you to look just like him. Show the world that God is good. And it's the goodness of God that causes men to repent. When our churches are paid for and we're healed in our body and our children are saved serving God. Everything that God has promised in the word, when it becomes flesh, we praise God as he is, so are we in this world. He's not in debt, I ain't going to be in debt. He's blessed with abundance, I have abundance. He's not giving me a spirit of fear, I don't have a spirit of fear. He lays hands on the sick, get results, I lay hands on the sick. In this world, get the same results. I must decrease, John the Baptist said, but he must increase. Now it's going to cost you something. Because in order for you to decrease, that's your flesh, you got to die. Paul said, I die daily. And that's the problem, church don't want to die. I believe it this way, and I don't care what she, we got attitudes, jealousy, and all of these things are hindrance to growth, becoming like him in this world. 
Peter put it this way. Wherefore seeing that we are born again now, he says, let us lay aside all filthiness and he lay in the strife and envy and all of these things, he says, and desire the sincere milk of the word that you might grow thereby. See, those things are hindrance of spiritual growth. That's why you don't, a lot of people don't look like Jesus in this world. There should come a day, everything that Jesus had in his life, before you leave this planet, now it's a process. And there's different levels. That's why we go from glory to glory. Your finances should be changing. The results in your prayer life should be changing. The anointing should be growing. It's a process. I must decrease, but he must increase. To the point that the word becomes flesh because we keep beholding this glory. Whew. This is available to the church, but, you know, the church has kind of become lazy and we don't want to do nothing. The pandemic made us lazy. That's why we out here and everybody ain't, we ain't got Bible study. I done said y'all can come back in this room and hear me preach, but people, nah, I kind of like being on the couch eating cookies and drinking milk. Don't get mad at me. I ain't said nothing wrong with that. I'm glad you're live streaming that. But there was a time people used to knock the doors down to get under the live anointing. It's something different about being under the live anointing. And the pandemic made a lot of us lazy. They gave a lot of people money and stimulus check. And you didn't want to work till the stimulus check ran out and need some now. That's why every restaurant you go in, please excuse us because our personnel, we don't have, a, if our service is because our person, we don't have enough employees because nobody want to work. Now it's getting a little better. But we should let that spirit creep in the church. Amen. I'm talking about a price to be like them. I ain't talking about... Now, there's different levels. You just want to have you, your goldfish house. I know it's paid for you out there. You happy. But don't be selfish. What about other people? What about other needs? You know, my needs were met years ago. I could not... I could have just... Even during the pandemic, I could have said to hell with everybody, man. I ain't going out there and preaching about myself. But I kept preaching because it wasn't about me. It was about the body of Christ. That's part of the character of God. We become like him in this world. When Jesus in this world, he healed the sick. He raised the dead. He cleansed love. He didn't leave no need unmet. Praise God. Two fish follow, and I want to be just like him. Hallelujah. And you don't get there being lazy. It's the word of God. In your spirit, transforming you, and the word becoming flesh as you keep beholding him. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 3. I trust you're getting something. It's time to get back in church, praise God. And I want you to know, praise God, you can become just like him in this world. And notice the main thing is perfecting love, loving like him, forgiving like him. I don't care who done did what to you. They stripped Jesus naked, tore his, his flesh off with the cat of nine tails, speared his side, and yet he said, Father, forgive them. That's why they know not what they do. I want to be like him, the ability to forgive. Praise God. The ability to love. Romans 5.5, 5, the love of God has been shed abroad. Same love in my heart by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. This is when we become powerful in the world and on our jobs and in the grocery store. And that came out. When they begin to see, they go, say, oh my God, that's the son of God. You don't even have to say that. You don't have to have no cross to identify. You don't have to have no 10 pound Bible. Just the fruit of Jesus emanating from your life. Mm. Now, look at this. We're talking about beholding Jesus. Look at 2 Corinthians 3, verse 1 through 3. Do we begin to commend ourselves? Or need we some other epistle? Epistle just mean letter. You know, I go a lot of times, I go to, I used to go to conventions and somebody come up to me, oh, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm preaching so-and-so, you know. They're trying to find a place to preach. And they say, here's my car. You know, I sat on the platform with Fred Price, and I sat on with Creflo Dollar and, and Ken or whoever, and oh, I preached with, you know, Bill. And, you know, okay, well, it's what they're trying to do is, look, if you got the anointing, you don't, you don't need no letter. Or I don't need your card. Keep your card. 
Huh? They're trying to impress. Card don't validate anything just because something is written down on a card. You know, power thrust ministries. You know, whatever. And it's a beautiful card. Paul said, we don't need that. I'm an apostle. I know who I am. Do we again commend ourselves or need we as some others, epistles, letters of recommendation to you, letters of, 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 of recommendation from you? No, ye are epistles, living letters written in our heart. Watch this, known and read of men. Good God Almighty. The word of God in their spirit and their life was being read. My God, they're out of debt. That, they ain't nobody had no card. No one sent a letter. It's just going on the fruit of their lives. Man, they had a fruit of love, joy, peace. That church is paid for. That, that was the message. He said, you are living. At, how do you become a living vessel? Get the word in your spirit and the word becomes flesh and people begin to read your life. You don't have to say nothing. Jesus didn't say a word. And even the devil knew he was. We know who you are. Why have you come to torment? Why? The fruit of God was coming. Didn't need no cross. Didn't need no holy water. Didn't need no sin for your, your, your prayer call. None of that. To validate himself. The anointing validates me. Just look at my life. Paul said you should know my purpose, my life. I'm healed. I'm the, you should know what I'm about. And he had got so much word in their spirit and manifested their life. He said, people are reading your life. People are reading your lives on the job. At war, every place you go, you don't have to say nothing. If you have the fruits of Jesus, they'll be able to see it. Stay with me. Let me finish this. He says, for as much manifest, declare to be apples of Christ ministered, not with ink, not on a piece of paper, not on your resume, but with the spirit of the living God. Not on tables of stone, but in fleshy tables of the heart. That's the key. My son, keep the word in the center of your heart and it'll flow out into your life. It'll become evident to everybody that you're healed. You're blessed. You're apostle, prophet, teacher. There are some people get mad at you if you don't call them apostle, bishop. Listen, I don't need none of that stuff to validate. Call me what you want. Just look at the evidence in my life. Praise God. Look at the evidence in my family, in the ministry. Look at my track record. That's a message. People are reading your life every day. Our lives should be scriptures in us being manifested where folks can see it. Healed, delivered, saved, born again. Good family, good marriage, good ministry. That cancel. He said, this thing get in your heart first, and then it won't need nothing in the ink. Let me, let me read this from Amplified real quick, real quick. My God. Let me, he says here, he says, are, are we starting to commend ourselves again? Or do, now watch this. Or do we, or we do, or we do not like some other false teacher. Oh, because they, uh, they, that's why they need a car. That's why they need some recommendation. Some other fault they need written credentials of letters, recommendations of you, or from you. Do we? No. He said, no. You yourselves are letters. You're like, what has got in your spirit, has got in your mind, recommended our credentials. Written in your heart, what was in the heart, the word of God, made flesh, being known, perceived, recognized, read by everybody. Man, they'll heal. That church is in love. That church is out there. They ain't got no cards. That was their credentials. The word was made flesh to show and make obvious that you are a letter. He's calling us a letter. The word got in their spirit and then it got out in the flesh. Delivered by us. Written, not written in ink, but in the spirit of living God. On tables of your heart. What was in the heart? The word put on human hearts. What get in your heart will come out in your spirit. The word will be made flesh. And people tired of this talk. They want to see something. Now look, I got a statement real quick. I got to move. You're more than a messenger. I'm just a messenger. No, you're more than a messenger. You are a message. 
You're, every day you go to work, you're, you're a mess. People are reading you. How you talk, how you walk. I'm just a message. No, you're a message. Either you send a message of Christ, either you send a message of defeat, either you send a message of, of healing and help. Praise God. How you do it? Get the word in your spirit. And he said, people are reading you every day. Huh? So I'm, I'm a message. I'm going to be a powerful message of healing, of debt cancellation to my generation. I'm going to be a powerful message. This is one that kept the faith. This is one that preached the word. This is one that didn't give up. By not saying nothing, by my actions, praise God. I don't need no letter of recommendation. I'm not waiting on something, you know, a card. If I can just get in so and so many, if I can get on, on TV and if I, no, I don't need none of that. I'm being read every day by my family, sending a message to my son. To, uh, that's your first message, love and commitment. I'm being read every day. Every son, the members, they watch you for 50 years. Is he on time? Does he preach the word? What do he do when sickness hit his body? He stands against the masses, more powerful than a car. That's the word being made flesh. A message. My God, Pastor, pay, we, he stayed with us. Now the churches are paid off, and this is paid. A message of debt cancellation. That this word works. You can't deny results. 1 Timothy 4.13. And 14, till I come. See, this is what Paul told Timothy. You, you, you dedicate yourself to get in the word. Get it in to public and private reading. Read the word of God. Study the word of God. Exhort preaching and personal appeal. And teaching, instilling doctrine. Letter, letter. That's what I'm doing, instilling doctrine. Why? God is trying to conform you to what getting your spirit to manifest in the natural. Do not neglect the gift which is in thee. That special inward endowment, which was directly imparted to you by the Holy Spirit, by prophetic utterance, when the elders laid hands on, upon thee at your ordination. Look what he said. Practice this. Cultivate it. Meditate on the word of God. These duties. Throw yourself wholly into the word of God. Keep it in your eyes. Keep it in the center of your heart. Keep it in your ears as your ministry so that your progress will be evident to her by you ain't got to preach. My God, you see what they did on that? They come out, you see that like you? Your progress will become evident. What's in you will come out of you. And you can't argue against truth when you're healed, when you're delivered, when you're out of that, when the church is going. I, listen, I don't need no letter. I'm just going to throw myself whole into this word and the word will, will be made manifest. How? By beholding Jesus. How you get there? Right in the same chapter. Drop the verse 18. No, 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 no. Put this statement up. Time spending, spent beholding Jesus will start producing the same results of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Time spent beholding Jesus. As you look into this word, just stand, man, my life began to be, I can't even tell y'all supernaturally what has happened. 50 years of ministry now. This is my year of jubilee. Things up, man, I look back and I'm like, what's going on, God? Stuff just falling in the favor of faith. This, God said, this is your year of jubilee. And I want you to announce it throughout the land. Hallelujah. Amen. No that. Everybody go free. God provided everything. It was that hallowed year when, praise God, the prison doors was open. It was called the acceptable year of the Lord. The year when the free favors of God shall profusely abound. God said this will be a great year for anyone that is, that is embrace your ministry. You're in a jubilee. You've been 50 years. And me and George saw, saw things. I ain't going to go into detail some of the super things, the supernatural things that have happened. But I've been sharing it with my wife. We've been talking about it. It's accelerating. Look at Acts 4. 13 and 4, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, perceived that they was unlearned, eager to men, marveled, they took, I wanted that in the Amplified. Wow, I wanted it in the Amplified. But that's okay, marveled that they had knowledge of him, that they had been with Jesus. Watch this, look at, look at the next verse. And behold, the man was standing out here, they couldn't say nothing against it. But I wanted that in the Amplified. If, you, if the Amplified says it a little more powerful, what I'm trying to show you, 
when you're with Jesus, time with Jesus, the man was standing there healed right at the beautiful gate. And they couldn't say nothing. Even though they had gone to school, but they had been with Jesus. They kept beholding Jesus. Are you listening to me? If we can get those two verses and find them. Because when you, the man is standing there healed at the beautiful gate, what's happening? They looking like Jesus. These guys ain't been to Harford. They didn't go to Yale or Princeton. But they have been beholding and been with Jesus. And what we saw in Jesus, now we see it in them. Now, when they saw the boldness, the unfeathered eloquence of Peter and James and John, see, they unlearned, untrained in school. Thank God you can't go to school to get this and all. You can't go to the cemetery to get this. Common men with no educational advantage. But they marvel. But you know what? They've been beholding Jesus. They've been around Jesus. They've been for time with Jesus. And watch this. And since they saw the man, see, if you don't believe me, you don't believe the word. They have been cured standing there beside. They could not contradict the fact that the same thing we see in Jesus, we see it in them. They couldn't say anything in opposite. This is how you shut the mouth of people, not with a letter of recommendation, but by results. When you get, your, you get them healed, when you come out of death, when you begin to see the same works of time beholding Jesus, People will shut their mouth. They'll try to lie. They'll be mad. They'll be jealous. But they'll say, you know what? <laughs> These are infallible proof, man. <laughs> I guess it's called. Yeah, that's what happens beholding Jesus. Spending time in the word. Giving yourself holy to this. Your, evident, your progress will become evident to all. Man, folks that used to come against me, as year after year, they start shutting their mouth as we begin to build buildings. I'm getting, we went into ministry. We kept helping. But not that it was about me. It was about Jesus. Because he's done it all. I give all glory to him. Praise God. But what it does, it shuts the mouth of people. Look at, look, 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 look at St. John 14, 10. Look what Jesus said. Believe thou not that I'm in the Father and the Father in me. The words I speak. Now, if out of the abundance of the mouth speak. You put the word in your heart to come out. He said, I don't speak my own words. I don't speak of myself, but the Father that dwells in me, he does the word. I speak the words, he does the works. That's why you should manifest. Believe us now, not that I'm in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the work's sake. They couldn't deny these men been with Jesus. Because the man was standing there healed. When you get healed out of death, when signs and wonders and miracles appear, when you begin to get your loved ones saved and born again, people can lie, talk all they want. You don't need no card. You don't need recommendation because the word has become flat. People can see. There's the works. They've been with Jesus. They've been beholding Jesus. Now, let's go to 2 Corinthians. Uh, we already there. Look at verse 8. Drop the verse 18. How do you behold him? As I get ready to close this thing. In the word. Now, I, 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 I read the whole chapter because this is what happened to Moses. You'll find out that Moses went up in the Old Testament into the presence of God for 40 days and beheld him. And guess what? That word got in him. While they was down there giving themselves over to idolatry, he was being transformed, literally. He came down with the glory. They had to put a veil over his face. That's Old Testament stuff. It changed him. It physically changed. The life of God was manifest. Beams of light was gone because he was in the presence of God. That's Old Testament stuff. That's done away. That was a veil over his face. And look, look what the Bible says about me and you. But all of us, verse 18, with, with, with unveiled face, woo-hoo, behold, this is the King James first, as we continue, uh, no, 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 all of us with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed. See, what's changing us? Beholding Jesus. The same image. We look into the word. He's out of debt. He's healed. Guess what? By beholding him, it begins to change us. And we are changed from what? It don't happen overnight. One degree of glory, even to the other. And this is by the Spirit of God. Now put up the Amplified. And all of us. See, this is available to anybody, not just Jesus. He wants to manifest the word in, 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 in your life. All of us 
with unveiled, uncovered faces. Because we, here's the key word, continue. You're going to miss it. You're going to come up short sometime, but stay in the word of God. Open back up the book. Go back in and look at the book. You see yourself healed. The word of God is called a mirror. You'll see yourself born again. It's called a mirror. He said, all of us with unveiled faces, because we continue to behold in the word as in a mirror. It reflects the image of Jesus. I looked in the mirror years ago. I was far from him. I was broken, bruised, but I was born again. It began to change my finance because I kept looking. It began to change my finance. It began to heal my body. See, you got to continue until as a mirror. The word of God is called a mirror to change you. i constantly being transfigured, changed into his very own image. Every increase in splendor from one degree of glory to another. don't happen overnight, but it happens over time. This comes from the spirit of the Lord. He's there to help you. There's times I want to throw this by, but I kept going back to the word. Going back to the word. This is what got me out of debt. Jesus is out of debt. This is what got me healed. Jesus is here. Everything that it projected as a mirror, it began to begin to transform my life. That's transforming. In other words, the word, what I saw in the word, in the spirit, was made flesh. As I kept beholding Jesus. Now look at this. Continually then, beholding Jesus in this word will transform your life. Thinking and finances. Got to close here. You need to get this, this teaching. Go over and over. And better yet, you need to get back in church. I look into the mirror of the word of God. When I first looked into the mirror in 1974, I was broken and bruised and had one pair of pants with dope holes in it. Riding the bozo by, I ain't looking nothing like Jesus. But I said, you know what? I made up my mind. I wasn't beholding him to get stuff. I wanted to be like him. And if you seek first the kingdom, all them other things will begin to year by year come into your life. Amen. It'll change your image. It'll transform your life. James 1, 23, 25. He says, if anyone listens to the word like you're listening tonight without doing it, just saying, well, that's good teaching. Yeah, but it, you ain't going to do nothing. You ain't going to act on it. It's like a man that behold. Careful look at his own face in a mirror. That's the word of God. God has showed us stuff, and we'll go straightway, just forget everything. That's what the devil wants you to forget everything God showed you. Watch this. He thoughtfully observes himself. The word of God will show you yourself. It'll show you Jesus, but it'll show you what you need to do, how far the gap between yourself and Jesus. He goes off and forget what he was like. You know, you saw you need to keep your mouth shut. Don't forget that. Don't let no corrupt. Anything from the word is trying to make you like Jesus. But he who looks carefully unto the faultless law of liberty. In other words, he beholds. It's called the perfect law of liberty. It'll set you free from sickness, disease, and faithful to it. Preserved, looking into it. Being not a heedless listener who forgets, but an act to do who obey. This man, he shall be blessed in his doing his life of obedience. I just made up my mind, I'm going to obey the word of God. I'm going to do everything I saw. Did, I, did it happen overnight? No. Did I fail? Yes, but I kept going back. And here I am 50 years later in my jubilee, healed, delivered, church, pray. And God wants us all to change. God wants us all to be pro progressively like Jesus. And the only way you're going to get there, the word made flesh. It's got to go, you got to keep beholding Jesus, praise God. Look at 2 Corinthians 5, 20. As I close. I might give you one more, praise God. It says, for we are Christ's ambassadors. You know what an ambassador is? It's the highest ranking representative there is. When we send an ambassador to China, when we send one to India, when we send, the president can't go, but the ambassador represents highest ranking official there is. Making his appeal as it don't like Christ was still here. Christ's personal representative. That word, you'll begin to look like Jesus. He ain't here no more. He needs some representatives of victory, of healing, of debt canceling. They can't see Jesus, but they can see you. We beg you for his sake. Lay hold on this divine favor. The free favors of God that profusely abound, offered, be reconciled to God. Wow. Christ's personal representative. Him manifested in, he ain't here anymore. Same thing God did. We couldn't see him, but we called him. You keep staying that word of God, you'll start looking like his personal representative. And when you got an ambassador, let me tell you, they live good, they're protected, and they got something else called 
diplomatic community, meaning they are not under the laws of whatever country they're in. I'm an American. You cannot arrest me. You cannot put me in jail. You can't do this. And when the devil, praise God, come and try to put you in jail and bring sickness, say, no, I got diplomatic immunity. I'm immune from sickness and disease. No evil shall befall me. No, I represent Christ, praise God, in this here. So what's coming on the world don't come on you because you represent Christ. That's the word being made flesh. So what's the key to this? I'm through. Stay connected to Jesus. He's divine. Not religion. He's divine. Stay, we are the branch. Because if you stay connected, if you stay in this word and keep me holding Jesus, whatever is on Jesus is going to flow out into the branch. It's going to come on you. You will eventually produce the same fruit. That's why they say, you know what? These ignorant learned men, but they've been beholding Jesus. And this man healed. Same thing Jesus got people healed. They're doing the same thing Jesus did. St. John 15, 7 and 8. I'm through. If you live in me, that's the key, the word. Who's me? The word. Abide vital union to me. Don't let people get you offended, leave the church, disconnect. You think you don't need the ministry anymore? I this, I the, forget where you came from. You, you're leaving the vine. You got to stay bodily connected. I ain't getting offended. I ain't letting no one take me away from my man or woman of God. I'm staying connected to Jesus, praise God. I know what my healing is and deliverance, and my words remain in you. See, get in you, it'll flow out and continue to live in your heart. Remember what's getting in your heart, it's going to come out in your flesh. Ask yourself your will and it shall be done. Why? For you? Why? For you to get glory? No. When you bear fruit. When they start seeing the same thing in your life that they saw in Jesus, when you start representing Jesus, it brings much fruit. My Father is honored, and it brings glory to God, and you show and prove to be a true disciple, a follower of mine. Beholding Jesus. It's time to get back in church, folks. I want to see you here this Sunday. We love you. We appreciate you. I trust that you got something out of this. Praise God. Join the YouTube channel. Get all these messages in there entirely. Continue to pray for me and Joyce. We pray for you. Praise and worship. 10, 15, morning streaming, 11. But listen, you need to get in the live service, okay? God bless you. Look forward to seeing you soon. Amen. I will do anything just to see.